Now, the reason, the, the point and the significance of this eyes like the eyes of a man characteristic is this, is that no other empire in all of history has ever given the amount of authority and a prominence to its a, a one single leader, as has been the Roman Empire through the Roman Catholic Church. The, the, one of the titles of the, the Pope is the Bishop of the Universe. And he has all authority over temp, uh, temporal and eternal matters, according and ecclesi, ecclesiastical matters according to the Church. That is the significance of this fourth characteristic. And with that, um, I wanted to ask, Rick, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? All righty. I just wanted to let our listeners keep in mind that basically what we're going over right now is the historical interpretation of biblical prophecy. And to kind of give a brief definition, is basically utilizing the Bible to identify significant factors um, that happen in as far as historical events. Now, one may ask, how does this relate to our uh, salvation, or how does this relate, or how can, this, how can I benefit from this information? It's simple. If we know history, we can know what can basically happen towards the future, because the saying goes, history always repeats itself. Okay, I want to take a quick break before we, we're going to go over the next uh, identifying characteristics. If you have any questions, you can call in on the line at 646-378-0987. That's our guest uh, uh, line for all of our listeners. Uh, let's go ahead and take a quick break. If you don't mind, Mike, we'll go ahead and Okay, take a we'll break. do that. Okay. The, uh, prophecies. If we go to heaven when we die, why is Jesus coming back for us? Can anyone tell the future? What's the mark of the beast? Can a man forgive sin? Would a loving God burn people forever and ever? Is there proof the Bible is the Word of God? Who's the Antichrist? For the biblical answers to these and other questions, visit BibleUniverse.com. Brothers and sisters who are listening to Truth About Sunday Worship Radio. We will continue with the scheduled programming in just a moment. If you have any questions or comments, or if you're a Christian who might be interested in helping to share these important truths in the last days, please contact us at truthaboutsundayworship at gmail.com, or you can contact us through our website at truthaboutsundayworship.com. Brothers and sisters, first and foremost, we want everyone to know that everything we share here at Truth About Sunday Worship Radio, we share it with a spirit of love and truth. When learning or hearing new information that makes you uncomfortable or disturbs you, please recognize that truth doesn't fear investigation, and that truth is the most important aspect of what we know. If we earn a doctorate degree in mythology, what have we really accomplished? And if what we already know turns out to be half-truths or truths mingled with error, isn't it better to find out sooner rather than later? And isn't it better to sleep well at night knowing that you've rooted out possible errors and that you're settled into or grounded in truth? Keep in mind Paul's plea to the Galatians. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Keep listening and root out the error, whether it's in what you're hearing or what you had believed to be the truth. On Truth About Sunday Worship Radio, you'll hear important truths on subjects like the prophecies concerning the Catholic Church, the Protestant Reformation, the Westminster Confession of Faith, the Theology of Futurism, and of course, the Truth About Sunday Worship. As you can imagine, with weapons like these, the adversary is sure to be close by. Please keep this ministry in your prayers. And if the Holy Spirit moves you to collaborate with the efforts of this ministry, 
please contact us at truthaboutsundayworship at gmail.com or again through our website at truthaboutsundayworship.com. As Luther once said, peace if possible, truth above all. We continue with our scheduled programming. God bless. Okay, folks, we are back. And um, real quick, Rick, before we get into the next characteristics, I thought maybe we should give out that 800 number, too. Uh, we have an 800 number now, folks, but we want to, um, if anybody wants to call in, definitely feel free. We're, we encourage callers, if you guys have any questions about any of this information, uh, we might not have all the answers immediately, but we will definitely research them and, and get back to you on them. Um, and we also would ask on the 800 number, if you've got a cell phone that has unlimited minutes or a landline that has un unlimited minutes, please use the regular call-in number. But otherwise, if you've got a toll line that you want to call in on, definitely please yeah. call in. That number is one eight seven seven five six nine three five eight nine. Again, it's one eight seven seven five six nine three five eight nine. And I think we're ready to go. Alrighty, to go over briefly a summary of the uh, first 20 minutes that we were going over, uh, Mike basically presented Daniel chapter 7. And in this chapter, it talks about several different beasts, uh, several different uh, kingdoms and things of that nature. And what we're going to go over basically is how do we identify the main characteristics. Right now we're going over nine typical characteristics in prophecy concerning the Roman Catholic Church. Now, in order to identify these marks, we basically have to understand the historical interpretation of prophecy. We dare not use our own guesswork or speculation concerning the historical identity of the little horn of prophecy. First point, a horn in Bible prophecy represents a kingdom. A beast in Bible prophecy also represents a kingdom. So when you look through uh, the book of Daniel, when you look in any other book in the Bible, and also especially for the book of Revelation, you'll see types and symbologies of beasts, of animals, lions, bears, different things of that nature. And we have to understand that these are symbolic, okay, of political powers okay briefly uh mike went over the first four uh prophecies pointing and i'll go over right now the the five points of prophecy pointing to the distinct distinct distinctive characteristics of the roman catholic church okay point number five this is found in daniel chapter 7 verse 24 and it states he shall be diverse which means different from the first horns, okay? He shall be diverse from the first horns. So uh, this basically means that the little horn power would be a different kind of power from those of the purely political kingdoms that preceded it. In layman's terms, we had a brief overview of all the political powers that that have come into the power since the time of Daniel. We had the Babylonians, we had the Medes and the Persians, we have the Kingdom of Greece, and specifically within that prophecy it says the fourth beast is the fourth kingdom. So we find this in verse 23, and the only organization and political structure that fits this is Rome. Okay, pagan Rome. Out of pagan Rome was divided ten different sections, ten different uh, kingdoms, ten different horns. Okay, and uh, Mike actually went over that. And out of those horns, among those kingdoms, comes forth a little horn. The papacy is that little horn because it is different, it is diverse from any other political organization by the simple flat fact that this is not only a re 